In this video, we will try to understand what is the use of big O notation. So a lot of times, you know, when you are discussing about algorithms, you know, when you're discussing about data structures, when you're discussing about some logic performance, you would see these words like O N square, O N, O one, right? So in this video, I will try to simplify what exactly is big O notation. Big O notation is a symbol, or I can say it's a symbolic notation, which says that how your algorithm will perform if the input data increases means what now when we talk about an algorithm algorithm has three important pillars the first one is the input the second one is the processing which takes place by the algorithm and the final one is the output so bigo notation says that if your input data increases how in what rate will the processing time increase right so it actually tells you the relationship between your processing time and the increase of data now let us try to understand this definition with an example let's assume that you have an algorithm now for that algorithm if i give five records it takes 27 seconds let's assume you know so it if 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 for that algorithm if i give five records it takes 27 seconds if I increase the records like 10 records, it takes some 105 seconds. If you see here the relationship, the time required to process by this algorithm is the number of records square. So when the record was 10, it took approximately 100 seconds. When the number of records were 5, it took approximately 25 seconds, right? So the relationship you know, which we can take out from here is that the time required by this algorithm is square of the input data now please note i have used the unit as records this can be bytes this can be bits i've used the unit here as seconds it can be minutes it can be hours it can be days so the units which i have displayed here is just for understanding purpose so now what i can do is rather than writing such kind of big equations i can say letter o of record square or i can say letter o of n square this n stands for data inputs it can be records it can be bytes it can be collections it can be bits it can be anything so when i say o of n square it means that the processing time required by that algorithm will be the square of the data input so now let us try to understand that what are the different ways of writing big o notation so the one which we have seen at this moment is the way you write is you will say o and then you will say the number of records uh, raised to 2, right? Raised to square, which we saw. Uh, so now let us see other examples of uh, big O notation. Now let's take this simple method here, or I'll say function here, say function 1. And this function 1 takes some list of data. So let's say that it takes some uh, list of data uh, and uh, it processes it. So in the processing, what it does is it does not do a lot of things. You know, it just goes and fetches the first record. That's it. This function one right out here is not doing anything great. It, it takes a collection of data and it just fetches the first record and does some processing with the first record. So if you see over here now, if we increase this list of data, the processing time won't change. Right. If you see here, let's say that if I put 100 list of strings, the time required for 100 list of strings and the time required for 1000 list of strings will be almost same. So what we can do here is the symbolic way of representing the performance of this um, uh, of this function is we can say O of one. So here this says that this algorithm performance will not change with the data input increase. Now let's take a second example. Now let's take an example of function two. So let me copy this. So here it is function two. In function two, uh, there is a for loop. So basically in function two, we are searching something. So there is a for loop, which actually iterates through the whole list of string. And if he finds a particular string in this, right? If he finds some particular name like Shiv in this, he will return, right? Now, if you see this function, right? 
what it is doing is it is actually looping through the string in a sequential way and trying to find something. In this case now, for 10 records, it will take some x time. But if the number of records increases, then the number of for loops will increase and the time will also increase. So here, the time is directly proportionate to the number of records, right? Or I'll say rather the increase of the number of records will also increase the time required for processing. So this kind of uh, performance we denote by O of N. So you can see O of 1 indicates that the performance will remain constant. O of N indicates that as the number of records increases, the time will also increase. So it's more of linear kind of a, um, a representation here. So this is saying that the performance will be more the performance will degrade or i will say it will the time required for processing will increase linearly with the amount of data coming in now let's take one more example a double for loop so you can see that i'm pasting a function 3 here now if you look at function 3 in this function 3 what we are doing is for every record in the data we are looping through all the records of the data so it's a double for loop right so if you see this algorithm, it's going to take twice the time of the record, right? So basically over here, then we can give a representation saying this is O of 2N. It's also possible that this can be O of N raised to squ N square, you know, so it's, uh, it's possible that, you know, in case uh, if the data is too high and if there is a lot of processing happening, this also is a possibility. Right. So you can see here some examples, you know, which I've given, you know, wherein we are saying that uh, how the big O notation will look like. So first example, this is more of a constant, you know, over here it is it is represented by O of one. So this says that the function performance will remain constant irrespective of the input data size O of N. This is linear and this is quadratic. Right. So in other words, uh, uh, in other words, O notation says that, big O notation says that, how will an algorithm perform if the data size increases? So now, when we see a big O notation symbol, we can classify how that algorithm will work from the performance point of view. You can see that here is a plot of time versus the number of data inputs. First one, you can see O of 1. Remember I said it is constant. So basically over here, even if the number of records or I will say even if the data input size increases, the time will be constant. And if I see O of 1, I don't have to worry. It's a good algorithm and I should embrace it. But from the practical point of view, definitely if the number of record increases tremendously, there is going to be a performance drop, right? So if there is a performance drop, I would be happy to see O log of N, logarithmic. In log, what happens is, initially the performance, uh, you know, decreases, but later on in the performance is the same. So basically the time taken for, let's say 100 record, it will be something X milliseconds, 200 it will increase but afterwards like you know 4000 5000 it will increase very minimally so even if i see o log of n i'm okay so this too i will say that these are good zones so when i see o log of n when i see o1 o of 1 i'm very happy but now when i start seeing linear for example this is o of n remember i showed you a code of o of n as well so in this case it is worrying because now uh, with the number of records increasing, with the data input increasing, the time will increase linearly. If I see exponential and quadratic kind of things, you know, like O n square, O of 2 of n, this is a bad zone. This is a bad zone. I don't want to see my algorithm in this kind of zones, right? So basically, when you look at the big O notation, you can start classifying saying that, okay, so is your algorithm in the good zone? Is the algorithm in an okay zone? Or is your algorithm in a worse zone, right? So that's what big O notation helps you to uh, look at algorithms from the perspective of performance. So that brings us to the end of this video. Uh, so keep watching questpond.com and keep learning step by step. Thank you very much.